Yeah, I'm just it's, uh, 15 after. I figured if people are tuning in. <laughs> All right, so good evening and welcome to the premier event of the Altadena Poets Laureate 2023-2024 season. My name is Nikki Winslow and I am the district director here for the Altadena Library District. Um, like with most of our programs, we're going to start out with our land acknowledgement statement. Uh, the Altadena Library District acknowledges its presence on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded land of the Gabrielino Tongva people. Altadena is located on the stolen homelands of the Hahamunga Tribal Band. The traditional territory of the Gabrielino Tongva is referred to as Tongvangar, which includes the areas known as Los Angeles County, Riverside County, West San Bernardino County, parts of Orange County, as well as the four Southern Channel Islands. Entities such as the US government and non-native settlers have subjected the Gabrielino Tongva peoples to historic and continuing injustices, including genocide, forced displacement, and cultural and linguistic erasure. Altadena Library commits to learning, educating, and informing its staff and residents of present-day Altadena about the rich histories, vibrant communities, and culture of Gabrielino Tongva people, present and past, through our collection development, resources, and program offerings. All right. So as I mentioned, I'm the director, and I'm pleased to see so many of you here tonight. We have a lot of poetry lovers in Altadena, huh? Uh, so it's wonderful to see you as we celebrate poets, poetry, and the amazing creativity we see throughout our community. To begin, I want to take a moment to congratulate our Poets Laureate, Peter J. Harris. Paula R. Samith. Not just for being as awesome as they are, but also for being named 2023 Fellows by the Academy of American Poets. Yeah. Only 23 poets were chosen from across the nation. But it's an immense honor and privilege and so deserved. Please help me congratulate Peter and Carl. As part of the fellowship, they have been awarded a good deal of money, which is nice, to lead a public poetry project called Ode to the Land which will pair senior citizens and high school students for a series of poetry workshops and public readings focused on place, home, and odes to iconic nature and cultural settings in Altadena. How cool does that sound? Right? <laughs> and on top of that, they're going to be conducting the regular program, slate of programs through now through April. So there's gonna be a lot of amazing programs and we hope to see all of you at all of them, information to come. Uh, we are proud to support them in these and their other events in the coming months. And it will be exciting to see this collaborative and community building work in action. We're also honored by how far the Altadena Poets, Lo Laure Poets Laureate Program since its inception. Uh, what started as a poetry event with 12 poets and cookies, <laughs> though I hear that it was an impressive spread of cookies, <laughs> has grown into an incredibly robust season of poetry events. Last year, Carla and Peter hosted a dozen live streamed events attended by more than 450 people. And the videos of these programs have been viewed close to 700 times on YouTube. 
I'm speaking on behalf of the district and our staff and the community. Uh, look forward to another exciting year of events starting tonight with this lunch. And with that, I'd like to introduce Peter and Paula. Thank you so much, Nikki. And before, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, before we get started, I'm going to talk a little bit about the programs that are coming up. Um, and before that, I'm going to introduce Polly Dedden, who was the, the founder of the Poet Laureate program. Um, but I want to actually call out one of our um, con workshop leaders because he's not going to be able to stay much longer. Many of you know him already, Mike the Poet. Mike the Poet. On September 20th, and this is open to everybody, we hope that you'll show that you'll come. That will make us really happy because we know it's going to be great. He's going to do a workshop on poetics of location, and that's September 20th from 6 to 8 p.m. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, Halloween is totally encouraged here. So um, we're so happy to see Peter here. We are so great. Yeah. Uh, I'll call Betty up here for a moment to just talk a little bit about how we all got started with this. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to just like thank you already for being such a great audience. <laughs> you totally like made my evening already. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you, Carla and Peter. And Nikki, thank you. <laughs> it's so wonderful to be here tonight. I'm just so honored to be with you all, to hear these great people, to see what they've been doing this, this last year. And um, I'm here to tell you just a little bit about how this all began. One Saturday afternoon, I was minding my own business at the restaurant desk when 90-year-old Ralph Lane came up and asked, do you have poetry readings? And I said, not yet. And so soon we got the okays and uh, we had poetry and cookies, an annual poetry reading and an anthology. And uh, two years later, his daughter asked, have you ever considered having a poet laureate? And I said, not yet. <laughs> So I presented the idea to our director, <laughs> friends, and the Altadena Town Council, and they said, okay, as long as you call it Altadena Libraries Poet and Laureate. <laughs> okay. So I gathered some ideas from other libraries, and in 2006, we began our five-yearly unpaid position of Poet Laureate. <laughs> A few other staff members and I chose Ralph Lane as our first laureate. In future years, we asked for sample poems, a bio that included community service, and an ideal poetry project. And you should have seen these guys' applications. They were so thick. They, they could be president of the United States. <laughs> Following Ralph, came Marsha Thompson, who performed a play she wrote. Arlene Terzang set up a series of readings. Linda Dove brought some very well-known poets. And since I was retiring at the end of 2014, and there was no one on staff that who could continue this program, I asked our coming poet laureate for 2014, 2016, would you please stand? Professional editor, Thelma Rayner, if she would, she and your publishing company would carry on the tradition of compiling, editing, and printing the anthology, and planning and implementing poetry readings 
throughout Altadena. And she said, of course. <laughs> and she did it. And by using a panel of local poets as its selection committee, she also transformed our homegrown poetry and cookies into a peer revered journal, the Altadena Poetry Review. Next came Aline Lipkin, who set up readings by outstanding poets, but she found there was assistance needed for the anthology, so I volunteered, and we decided all future poet laureates should be a two-person position. Then came Teresa May Chook and Hazel Harrison. Celebrated the Tonga tribe of early Altadena with a program of basket weaving. And she told the most wonderful stories. I just, it was so exciting. I couldn't believe how exciting these Tongas were. But she she did it. She 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 created this wonderful program. Khadija Anderson and Jessica Abugadis took on workshops, brought them online, brought the anthology online and the workshops, and they began a cento on real resilience. That is, people from all over the community sent in one lines, and they created this long poem about resilience. What, what a lovely idea. And then in 2022, along came Carla Samoth and Peter J. Harris. Who <laughs> began some truly amazing multimedia events. If you came to some of those last year, you know what I'm talking about. Music, art, photography. Poetry, too. And it was just an amazing, amazing year. And I'm truly honored to be here tonight to hear this amazing duo speak their poems. How far we have come, how far they have brought us. Thank you. Thank you. So much, Polly. Um, I want to first introduce Sakaya Manning over here, who's the new member of our team, our project manager. And if you're participating in any of the event, you will you will feel and see their presence around. Um, I also wanted to talk a little bit about what we have coming up this year. Um, so we talked about Mike, the poet, who's going to be doing that work, the first workshop. These are our regularly scheduled Altadena Poet Laureate workshops. This next workshop on October 24th in that series is Shonda Buchanan. Shonda, are you here? Yeah. And on October 24th, Shonda is going to be doing something so perfect for Altadena, writing the Octavia Butler poem, honoring an Altadena Pasadena daughter of the land. Yeah. Then we're going to have a poet laureate um, extravaganza. <laughs> we're going to have Hazel Harris, Hazel Clayton Harrison, Teresa Mitchell, Aline Lipkin, Lipkin, and Thelma Reyna. And if any, all of you who are here, please stand up for a moment. Um, and then we're going to have a reading that's part of our Ode to the Land series, and it's going to be at the historic Sorthy Ranch, um, and it's going to feature, that's going to be on April 7th from 4 to 6 p.m., and if you, I, I really hope that you all can make that. That's going to feature Shonda Buchanan and Sochi from the Southern Yeah. yeah. And then the final event of the season will be poetry and cookies. Um, still doing that. And we will have Peter is going to talk a little bit about the anthology in a few moments. 
Um, but that is going to be on Saturday, April 27th, 11 to 1. You know what? You don't have to even remember these times because you have a flyer. So, <laughs> but I just want to talk a little bit about the Ode to the Land workshops. These are for directed for, if any of you show up who don't fall in this category, we're not going to kick you out, but they are directed to, we're, we're putting together seniors 55 and up. I do fall. Um, and, and high school students. Um, and they're going to be on Saturdays, and they're going to be wonderful. Look at the flyer for a detailed description. But the first one is coming up this Saturday, not this Saturday, Saturday, all Saturday, Saturday, September 30th from 11 to 1. Um, and that's with Shonda Buchanan writing a heritage poem. She's going to be wonderful. Um, and then on October 28th, from, also from 11 to 1, but they're all Saturday 11 to 1, is going to be with Bonnie S. Kaplan. Home is where the art is. Bonnie, you want to stand up? Saturday, January 13th, um, from 11 to 1, we're going to have Nature of Metaphor with Teresa Mitchell. So we hope that you all come, that you'll... You'll come, you'll bring a high school student, bring another senior, just be there. Okay, now I gotta go back to my notes and see what happens next. Okay. Do you want to say anything more about the Oath to the Land project? Okay, basically, um, the connection between the seniors and the high school students, they, they will be writing, they, they will be using different mediums like art and nature, but they're, they're going to be writing about place, identity, family, praise, poems, odes. Yeah, okay, see this is, okay, I just wanna mention that Something is coming up this year, which is the recruitment of the, the next poet laureates. So would you please look around, think about it. Think about applying if you're in the area for this poet laureateship. We'll, we'll fill you in on any questions you have. Um, this is going to be open um, between October and November 30th. So keep an eye open for that. Website. Yes, and Peter's going to talk a little bit about our anthology. Peter is the editor in chief, um, and what that process is going to be. Oh uh, yeah, so we're going to do an anthology. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're excited because uh, because of the pandemic, we shifted to the online review. But we will also work with film and the press. No, it's standard. <laughs> <laughs> Some people are good at what they do. Some people are virtual, so she's a virtual so with this stuff. All her books are good. A wonderful poet that our panels together. So we will work very closely together, although from remote work. Um, the anthology will include the poems that were published last year in the online review. That will be one section. Uh, we may be able to put some of the poems in. Um, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Yeah, got my little light Barry White on y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so we will have an open call as well. Again, we'll make these things available through the uh, mailing list at the library. So um, don't send any forms yet. <laughs> Unlike last year, when we do the open call for the anthology, we will not demand that you write so-called a frastic for poems in synergy with our, our portfolio of artists, uh, like we did for the online review. Uh, so you'll be able to submit poems. Are well, you lucky I got sick? Because <laughs> this is the truth. Uh -huh. 
Uh, I was going to make y'all come to a workshop <laughs> with a series of serious poets checking you in. Uh, but when I got sick, we just uh, ran out of, well, sorry, I ran out of energy. And Carla, I want to say this too uh, before we move on. Um, before a call reads. You know, <clears throat> Carla and I had never worked together before. And in fact, um, we knew each other and um, we had good energy as a, as a group. But when you throw two people into the intensity of programming, conceptualizing, it ain't no joke. And we discussed and debated, and we never threatened to quit <laughs> on each other. But we did say, do we really want to be as comprehensive as we subsequently chose to be? And I was gung ho because uh, personally, uh, if I'm going to do something, it's got to be interesting to me, kind of pop for me. Um, and uh, Carl and I talked it through, and she said, you know what? Let's go for this. And we smacked, we smacked it. We did, we stopped. <laughs> yeah. uh, it was hard. We figured out what that means. And I want to thank her, especially for this, the lead up to this event, the adaptation of our program here, Old to the Land, was exquisitely comprehensive. Uh, we was going to have like a parallel season. We was going to kick each other's butt. <laughs> but we was getting paid this time. <laughs> and I say all that to say, you know, and she was very kind. She asked me, can you do this? I said, this will help me heal. If I don't get up out of here, and I was close, then doing this work will help me heal. And it has. I'm here to tell you that two weeks ago, I would not be able to stand here without this little thing next to my daughter. She back at me and said, I'm going to get that shit. <laughs> this is my, also my way of introducing Marla, who is a fine poet deep cultural worker who has been on many a front line of the intersectional lives that we live here in the country. And she's going to read about 10 minutes. And then afterwards, I'll give you just a tad bit more detail about how it is I'm standing here. And I will introduce Rivette and Soshi, who have decided they want to read each one of my own poems, just so kind. Um, and then I'll read both this out. And uh, if you didn't bring your tissues, you were in cold blooded trouble. And you were out crying probably five or six times. <laughs> so please welcome Carla Samus. If she wants to speak. Here somewhere. Requiem, wait a minute. Requiem for believers after Audre Lorde, a litany for survival. For those of us who believed living together was possible, the Jewish socialist summer camp run like a kibbutz. For those of us who thought we could do a flying horror dancing all Shabbat night, and that life might be like that, we were surprised. For those of us that believed, give what you can, take what you need, and found ourselves with nothing but an ex-wife's forged checks, we fell from the sky, wings broken, learning what could never be fixed. We were undone. For those of us that insisted justice should prevail, our posters painted over and ripped up, marching, we hope so much could change, but there are those of us that shook our heads. For those of us that crave the rough underneath, the sinewy, burnt out stories, we learn to love the laughter and pray in secret 
For those of us that used to believe there was a God, we learned to wonder in the silence. But for those of us that found the warm pot of chicken soup waiting at the door, unexpected and unrequested, a son that did not stop saying, I love you so, so much. We began to believe again that enough music notes will make arthritic hips pivot and sachet. A firecracker might send a St. Bernard into a mama's lap. And a fierce storm might just bring us all together, huddled under one blanket, knowing we might not drown. I tell people, this, wait, this is going to take you back a few years, lest you think that I'm really the age I reference here. <laughs> Vista. I tell people I'm an 18-year-old butch, a boy trapped in my 58-year-old body, or a 20-something sober young man, like my son's friends in recovery, who gather around him on his 21st birthday. Then I too can say things like cool as fuck, or even be that. <laughs> <laughs> One of my son's young friends, a girl says, oh, look, your mom, she's such a mom, so cool and beautiful, tells me I wanted to meet you, and I want you for a daughter-in-law, I think. <laughs> so she is just a friend who loves my son, as many do. A young couple arrives with their baby, who I greedily borrow. Look how the baby looks at your mother. I wanted so many more. So sure of that thing, wanting to be a mother, only one precious one lived, one out of eight pregnancies. But the view changes. And I can't quantify my unstoppable gratitude for my son until I die or perhaps lose my mind. Does my mom still feel gratitude? We think we see joy slowly lighting her face when she recognizes one of us, her children, grandchildren, caregivers, a lone piece left of her. Sometimes her smile matches ours like a gurgling baby grin, mirrors a delighted audience. Yesterday I noticed she still gulps her coffee the same way. She who talked and mothered so much more than we cared to listen. Today she stares blankly, offering a surprise sentence. Yes, it does. Or that man certainly is repulsive about that buffoonish, dangerous bully who's now the president. We know who that was. <laughs> Years before, when she could talk, she pointed to Senator Obama. See that man? Someday he'll be president. But then the view changed. Someday I may see some of what my mom saw in her twilight years, fairies coming to rescue her, or bad boys, abusive men that lurk in the dark, who she thought she married after our father died, television movie characters, Booth from Bones, Mr. Darcy, Perhaps my delusions will also be purely my own, or will I worry myself to my grave like my dad, even though Parkinson's hammered the nail? Today, the sky beams pink, gracious clouds. The sun rises outside my kitchen window. I'm not usually up this early. Sweet surprise, the view after the storm that blasted through our scoundrel, the city of angels. Even as I age, I can see the view change. Me in my own body, loving my life as it is, embracing my South African wife who my son calls a badass. Perhaps I'll plant one more tattoo on my 58 year old vessel, but not on the breast since it will soon meet my stomach. <laughs> the view changes. <laughs> there is nothing gentle about regret. I am a veritable hoarder stocking my cupboard with overflowing boxes of why didn't I, and if I only, if only I had. My backyard, a swamp, I wade through knee deep, moldy piles of should haves, a house, a lover, a pregnancy, a book. Vultures swoop in to pick over dismembered decisions. Where is a sweetened lemonade you would have given to a parched friend telling her you did the best you could? This has always been in short supply. You might have wrapped up in the softest quilt you toss over your dearest one. Instead, you choose the meanest sledgehammer, the heaviest wire cutter, and pay the toughest matcha outside True Value Hardware in Altadena. The one with 10 eyebrow piercings. And ask her to break the lock to your garage where you've stored last decade's regrets. 
time to dust them off and mourn the life you could have lived. But this steely-eyed Sabra surprises you. She speaks to you in Ladino, tells you to burn it all down, drags the softest horsehair blanket from her truck, drapes it over your shame-scarred shoulder, and tells you a bright star glows inside of you that spells Herculean, your throttled cry that turns you upside down and inside out. You did the best you can, you could. Hinene, I am here, she paints on your heart then kisses you gently goodbye and disappears, a sweet-smelling dust devil. You light a match, toss it in, lock the garage door, and walk away. Okay. <laughs> I can watch some more. Um, this one is for my partner, who can't be with us tonight because one of um, her former he was in the military and the Coast Guard on a former um, uh, basic training mates committed suicide. Mm. My wife who became my husband, he has begun to sound more mannish as if we were in an old time movie, maybe my fair lady. He's as grumpy as Professor Higgins. <laughs> I'm not saying he wasn't a curmudgeon before, but the first days after his top surgery, it was as if he'd awoken in his real body, this new he and my husband, and I was moved by his happiness, as if he'd finally landed on the right planet. But then I suppose the anesthesia and pain pills wore off, and there was a downward movement as if the plane went into a tailspin. He says he has no regrets, but perhaps some resentment that he couldn't have been born into the right body the first time around. After that, I couldn't seem to locate the euphoria, the sweetness of those early post-surgery days when I could tend to him. And even with his pain, he looked upon it all with wonderment, as if he tunneled out the birth canal again, the right gender. This is not what I had in mind when I married that woman. The leap into removing those lovely breasts that were so sexy with the other masculine trappings, her manera de ser, twitchy but tender, six pack fit and tough yet vulnerable, hair tied back, neatly pinned to the top military style. The first time I saw her after we'd met, she was waiting for me, leaning against the building in California Plaza, La Santa Cecilia playing in the background. We both gained weight since we married in 2016. Rocky Road and streaming television are sometimes what holds us together. <laughs> He's got angry scars on his chest, and the tone of his voice often matches with raw irritation. I am always asking too much because he's working full time, in school full time, taking two courses at another university, and getting shots of testosterone. But I'm a long hauler. By third marriage, I no longer resort to fight or flight as the only options. I remember the photo the documentary photographer took of still her the night before surgery. The light was just so duskish and she lay back arm behind her head, shirt off, those sexy blue shorts that matched our Mexican blue bedroom wall, her blue, blue eyes, a badass look, breasts falling just so, and still there. Tough, languid, even, but sensual. It has been almost a year now. Let me just say that he is happy with this new adolescence, this coming of age. When puberty first hit him as a girl, he offered to give the breasts away to those who complained of having them. He gleefully shaves his facial hair that begins to crop up. His acne a welcome sign that change is happening. I see the he appearing every day, begin to see that mixture of shadow and light again. This is who I always was, he tells me, as he emerges from the chrysalis. He says he wants to be the right kind of man. Think tender. Think learning to listen, to not run from feelings. Think social justice spider, nonviolent. My longing for something different, a woman, is eclipsed by my love for this person that dared to make this change at 45, to be the man he always believed he was. I have one last very short one. You know, it's funny how when you have children, all your like your photos on your phone and your poems are all about them. But now we have a Saint Bernard, and they all seem to be about the same. <laughs> Sorry, Gabriel. Sachet. We do a short walk this time across Belvedere and back in our Northwest Pasadena neighborhood. 
I want to walk miles, but my hurting hips say otherwise, feeling as if Shakira were here singing, my hips don't lie, <laughs> but only mine are not swinging like hers. I wish Dakota or St. Bernard would teach me how to sashay, move her hips so sexy and gracefully, big and beautiful, that girl. She lives for sniffing and finding people, Milo says. I tell my beloved, she found us and we were rescued. We walk on home. Thank you. The wonderful, marvelous, talented, beautiful Peter Harris coming up to introduce to two readers who will read some of his poems and then we'll get to hear from Peter. Um, little could my daughter. That, um, it's deep when your ass looks in the abyss. All of a sudden, he'll be saying, Oh, I don't see it, brother. It's pretty good. Yeah. So, but thank you so much for having me. I, I remember Kamal Gowry and I were doing a read at the envelope. And nobody knew. <laughs> <laughs> we was buff as a moon. <laughs> um, but smart and wise as Kamali is, he said to me when he was performed with um, the great orchestra. Hey, what's uh, our brother's name? Tapscott. Tapscott, Horace Tapscott. He said, Horace. Oh, everybody, and they face an audience of very few or almost nobody. Don't stress, play to the universe. Yeah. Never forget that. And these two universal beings, two young colleagues, um, were about to read. I have no idea what they're going to read. I've asked them not to tell them all that stories. <laughs> Anybody for me know that I'm talking way more than a student. I think I'll read their bios and then just say what about how they So, so she, she said that they resides in the San Gabriel Valley and the daughter. Mexican immigrants, author of Posada, Offerings of Witness and Refuge. Her second collection, Incantation, Love Poems for Battle Sites. Come on. <laughs> Let's try the love poems. Um, will be released in October from Mouth Field. Press. So she writes to cultivate love and comfort in chaotic times. Mango is co founder and director of one of our co sponsors, Women Who Submit, a really marvelous organization here locally, but I guess you are international as well. And um, their mission is to encourage women to submit their work to major journals all around. So we're happy to have them. My friend Louisette Resto, a mother, teacher, poet, Wonder Woman fanatic, was born in Aguas Buenas, Puerto Rico. Proudly raised in the Bronx. Right, right. She is a Canto Mundo and Macondo Fellow and a Pushcart Prize nominee. She is on the board of directors for Women Who Submit. Some of her latest work can be read on Spillway, North American Review, 
and the latest anthology, Gathering. Her latest collection, Living on Islands Not Found on Maps, is published by Flower Song Press. Her first two books of poetry, Unfinished Portrait and Ascension, were published by Tia Chucha Press. Both those presses happen to have published books of mine. So I'm very pleased that we share those imprints. And she is, in fact, the first person who wrote me and said, Peter, you live in Altadena, don't you? <laughs> you should apply to Laureate. So whatever drama and trauma I have brought to the community. <laughs> is partly her fault. <laughs> the transcendence that we brought together got its start because of Louie <laughs> Please do welcome Louie Bell. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, folks. Um, I'm just quickly going to say I'm not sexy enough, cool enough, or musical enough to read one of Peter's poems. When I was looking them over, I was like, I'm just not bad enough for this. <laughs> I'm reading from an excerpt from Black Man of Happiness in Pursuit of My Unalienable Right, winner of 2015 American Book Award. I'm trying to tell him that none of this will be easy, that it takes the hardest work of our lives to remain personally resilient, ethical, hopeful, artistic, and resourceful, especially in the face of challenges. I tell him that we should look within ourselves. We should care more about our health and more about our futures. I just want to be an animating force in my grandson's life, which he has to live for himself, of course. I want him to have a clue about those elemental focus areas of all our lives, education, health, family, work, living incomes, and criminal justice. But I want this toolkit to also include inspiration, imagination, creativity, metaphor, celebration, empathy, compassion, and improvisation. When I think like an administrator and not a grandfather, I ask how can we trust the cultivation of these so-called soft tools? What role could they play in our lives? How could we seamlessly weave and incorporate them into even administrative processes? How could inspiration specs maintain the rigor necessary to execute an administrative mission or reach organizational goals? Talking and listening to Jelani, I am full with the understanding that there is nothing soft about trusting intentions, knowing viscerally, concentrating deeply, loving simplicity, developing fortitude, building stamina, and accept, accepting excitement and curiosity as catalysts for new angles, supple thinking, leaps of associations, and vocabularies of possibilities. But don't wait until you're in crisis. I'm trying to say, locate the sources of your power, your strength, your vitality, your vision, and become a powerful circuit breaker to actual and potential violence by using your mind and imagination to inspire change within yourself and within your world. Create your own governing myths, craft your own life-saving metaphors, generate your own inspiring narratives for the future, and stitch what's awesome into the quilt of practical approaches necessary to ensure our, your healthiest futures. Thank you. I am not sorry that I sent him that email. <laughs> I am very glad. I think we're all glad that I sent him. Uh, I'm going to read a poem from his latest collection, Song Again, that was published uh, in, in late 2022 by Beyond Baroque Books. Our names are contraband. 
When isolation tortures me, your name heals me. When prison desiccates me, your name saturates me. When banning exhausts me, your name renews me. When touch escapes me, your name embraces me. When police shoot us, ministers legislate us, contractors bulldoze us, constitutions amend us, corporations depreciate us, paper pushers deport us, our names are contraband. Protesters shout our names under threat of arrest. Students undermine, impose illiteracy, learning our names. Lovers acclaim our devotion face to face with spies, willful enunciations, smoldering roll call, joy on a move. My house. Some of those last essays um, were written waiting to see if the sheriff was coming to shut my stuff down. Mm -hmm. So, okay, okay. <laughs> Let me um, tell you what well, I could have done that to you. That was some James Brown. <laughs> what time is it, Mike? Peter time. Data time. Uh, um, okay, I would love um, very much to say that this is a normal poetry reading, but it is not. Um, at first, I want to say thank you to the Smallwood Library and its staff. I can tell you um, that work that I have been doing independently for over 20 years, found its home here. Uh, now, I typically name people without any hesitation, but I don't want to try that right now because I didn't write them there. But they know who they are. And because of the marvelous professional research that these two colleagues in particular, in particular helped me do, we were able to publish. In this book called The Black Man of Happy World. Sorry, sorry. Can see you emanating a sense of joy. Helen, would you say it, please? Helen no longer works here with this. Brilliant young person. Helen got so hyped when she was assigned by Mel Aldama. Mel, are you here still? I may have left. We talked a little bit. She was, Helen was so hyped when she began to send out emails to try to find uh, if archives had pictures of black men and boys presenting themselves joyfully. She coined this turn of phrase. She said, I have a client here who is looking for photos of black men and boys emanating a sense of joy. Oh, come on. Isn't that incredible? <laughs> Always give her credit for that. I didn't even pay her. It's <laughs> <laughs> they're a real low break. <laughs> oh, so we thank those two particular colleagues. I can tell you, having moved to Altadena without Wi Fi, library <clears throat> was absolutely uh, great, uh, graceful in its welcome of me. And I will never, ever forget it. And, and 
had a man, but Bryn, who designed the marvelous fire. Please, what, what's Bryn's last name? Wall. Can you, can you give him a friend? Um, okay, so, so here's the deal, y'all. I was traveling throughout the summer. I got a wonderful opportunity to go to my hometown of D.C. for a three-month residency at something called the Nicholson Project. And D.C. is my stomping ground, is my favorite part. So I had this first chance to be paid as an artist. And I went back home. My brother was very ill. Um, worry, worry. So for three months, I was in this constant sort of ecstatic, chaotic state. And <clears throat> uh, by the end of that visit, and by the time I came here, uh, returning to Altadine, where it was hot as blazes, as Dirk Brickle used to say. Um, I began to start suffering, couldn't breathe. Uh, and so on July 31, I, at four o'clock in the morning, I was like literally drowning, it felt like. So I called 911. And my beloved Miss Pearson, who I was renting from right down the street, I called her and I said, I something is going crazy here. And so she said, you know, she opened the gate, firefighters came through. Uh, by the way, I now realize why firefighters do get them calendars. <laughs> All four of them do is just buff. <laughs> <laughs> they were totally tender with me. Yeah. And they said, Mr. Harris, blah, 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 can we turn? Can we help? So I was like, well, I don't really know. And so they said, well, boom, I start trying to put oxygen. Uh, I typically don't tell these kind of stories at a portion of <laughs> Like I said, this is a tad different than my normal noise. So they lifted me up. Took me into, you know, the joint. They had a big old fire truck. They had you know, everything that goes with that. And so they start putting oxygen on me. For some reason, that made me panic even more. And I started to moan. I swear I was made to stay. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> Urban man, I'm supposed to be in hell. <laughs> so literally, I fainted. And I woke up two days later. So I went to sleep on Sunday. Sorry, Monday, it's about five o'clock in the morning. And I woke up at ICU at Huntington Hospital on Wednesday. How did I know it was Wednesday? My daughter was there. She had flown in from Jordan, and my son was there. And it's super, super important for me to tell you all that this brilliant, beautiful young lady here in particular, my son is on the one as well, but he has a different temperament than she does. <laughs> and she has stood with me <laughs> through this experience. She has smacked me around. <laughs> she has gone to get medications. She has held my hand. She cleaned out my house. <laughs> she shipped it back with the help of my son. So I would like you to please me on my door. Most profound 
thing about the neurons here is we have been working together for years now because he was sexually abused in her teens by a black stepfather. I say black on purpose. So you know that I have the capacity to both celebrate black men and to kick them in the ass. Yeah, that's right. We put him in jail. Back to my daughter's leadership. We kept me from going to jail. Yeah. And we traded a, an approach to our living called Pops and Ade. He calls me Pops. And she won't let you call her Ade, but I can. She <laughs> <laughs> was Adenike. And so for her, she just started a new job. She negotiated the ability to put the job on hold while she came here to California, where she had lived for 10 years thereabouts and then moved back during COVID. Um, so I just want you to know I'm dedicating this poetry experience to my beloved, so my, the baby of the family who allowed me even when she was born, I wasn't even there. I had, if you buy the book, so she read, you know why. <laughs> anyway, so thank you for letting me be myself. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to read the And I want you to know that I will be shortly moving to Florida because my son lives there. He has a little old house and his daughters have his own home. And he has his sister on the island that I come. Uh, and um, I will participate in all of our programs in my history. Uh, but you know, so I want you to know that I am very seriously co-poet laureate with Carl Sandler. That's right. And we We'll be collaborating all the way to start eating cookies. It's the same place for right? a problem, but maybe not. Now, last year, when we segued away from the printed anthology to the online anthology, uh, online review, uh, uh, we created something called the Synergy Portfolio. And we had photographers and painters and musicians, and dancers, and um, a few other art of uh, musicians. Did I say that probably? And we asked everybody who wanted to submit to the review to write a new poem. And we asked them underneath the title of the poem to say, written in synergy with name of the art form or the artwork by the artist then bang the form so that's why i said you know i was going to work here <laughs> uh, this, yeah. so i told one of our artists who happens i noticed it's here tonight Dave michael walker would you stand i don't work very fast with forms anymore so along the way, I'd say, I'd see him at one thing or another, and I'd say, Michael, I think I got something for your piece. And he sent us several pieces. So this is called Six Seance, written in synergy with snake bit by love. You don't know what love is. <laughs> Digital photo montage. Okay? <laughs> yeah, Michael. So Michael finally got it done. <laughs> Sweet mothers of bliss, voices a call and response aperitif. Timeless author sister, elastic 
dancers of the six seance, hurrying after hours, sipping a shot of coiled snake venom. Makes beautiful music. Come on, spread some ecstasy within me, radiating insights alive in our two step, knowing song melting our whispers. I can't stand I circled dimensions cultivating swirl in the joy of myself, a medium, quietly attuned, slipping mirror, sensing vibrations, sightless brother, sensually wailing for his sweet mothers of bliss. Echo locating to a sure infrared place in their sacred, in their sacred patrimonium. Well, I know at least one of my doctors is here. <laughs> I don't know where she is, but she is a speech therapist. And I was told by my daughter that I had something called intubation while I was under, um, you know, those two days. I wanted to. As I came up for air, Ruben was one of the first people to come in and help work on exercises to swallow it. Because I was like, what? I can't even swallow this joint. And to her credit, I probably was a terrible patient, but to her credit, she kept showing up. Um, I just want to thank her for also Sharing sort of a real humanity in the midst of this crisis. Oh, here you are. <laughs> Some of my folks might say, Girl, why are you helping get his voice back? <laughs> <laughs> Again, <laughs> trauma and drama. <laughs> Carla's beloved sister is here. I noticed earlier she has this marvelous necklace with dragonflies. And I happen to have a poem here called Sean Love. Come on, Come on. Those of us who are Michael Jackson lovers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd like to read this short. <laughs> Immense dragonflies, the dazzling trajectories up top, churning white water, daring me to slay demons arrayed like assassins, steaming up my breath and doubting up my sleep, intoning me to face tribulations with flamboyance of a maestro conducting transcendent orchestra. Shalom. Mm -hmm. Who? Who needs silver bullets pockmarking road signs to the end of the world? On your back. Your way. Save this earth from the palms of your hands. Oh, yeah. 
Oh, no. Um, I mentioned from how what did y'all say at the hospital to be ordered at the nursing joint to be exiled into the We found out what's wrong with you, but we already know. Uh, so get out of here and go take some physical therapy. You're as good as we can make it. <laughs> but they kept saying to me, I met this marvelous uh, physical therapist who happened to be from Romania. And she came in and she says, Mr. Harris, um, nice to meet you, blah, blah, blah. And she saw that I still have my faculties. And I was talking a whole lot of shit, to be honest. Because <laughs> I sure didn't want to be there. But I was, uh, you know, as you can see, I'm sort of frank and sort of chic. <laughs> I lost about 40 pounds. Uh, but it turned out to be mostly liquid. Uh, so I'm actually back now to a decent weight. Except a brother can barely lift a cup over the bottle of water. But <clears throat> she said, Mr. Harris, <clears throat> You keep this attitude, and from where I can tell, as a physical therapist for more than 20 years, I am confident you will improve, and you will have to take baby steps. You will have to go slowly. You will have to slow down your body, though your mind is like, Alel, Alel. <laughs> um, and so I can honestly say that she and her team and what a wonder oh y'all gonna love this I gotta share this Terrell you know I don't usually talk like this but come on but I gotta do so there's a young brother at the rehab section he's from Pasadena what was his name Marcus Marcus brother Marcus he's a tall handsome so we were talking he says Mr. Harris you remind me of my father Passed away. And he said, Did you did you do you did you go see like classic musicians? Blah, blah, blah. I said, Well, in certain periods of my life. And he started saying, well, who, who, who did you go see? I said, Well, you know the best band I ever saw was Earth Moving Fire. Yeah. <laughs> They're absolute prime. Yeah. I saw that. Oh. Russ started scrolling through his phone and he pulled up. That's the way of the world. And start playing it while I was sitting in a chair with weights. Mm. All of a sudden, here comes that boom, 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 boom. And I bust out crying. And all of a sudden, I start playing the chair. <laughs> bang, bang, bang. And he got hot. He turned the shit up. It was an old <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, I mean this disrespectfully, but there were people in there who had no capacity to do what I was able to do. But they was in there, and they didn't bitch, they didn't complain, they just slowed down. And one of the, one of the uh, uh, nurses who was doing the stuff, she was like, okay, <laughs> and finally he got around to up for the downstroke. <laughs> Parliament. And he said, Mr. Harris, this is my father's place. Mm. And as he played, I mean, he also played Salpina, so <laughs> and this wonderful batch of music. And I want to thank him as well. Um, because, and even on the day I was discharged, he came up ready to work with me. He said, oh, you out of here, right, huh? He said, you sure you don't want to get one in? Yeah. Don't worry about it. Well, I'm going to do this poem, and I will close. Uh, I want to thank you so much. I do have one world stage note. I'm going to hold that.
Okay, so I mentioned that I'm on Flower Song. Press with Yvette, and the book is called Safe Arms. 20 Love and Erotic Poems. <laughs> with an ooh baby baby mom. <laughs> it's modeled after, modeled not as good as, but it's modeled after probably the movie's 20 Love Poems and a Song of the Spirit. This is called Recipe. I don't you can call it. <laughs> you have seesawed me to rest on my back, curled up in the cradle of my chest. We are a miracle of silence and breath. I forget how to kiss you, sinking in a chemical overtone. Wishing, wishing before I speak into your scalding mouth for a recipe I could follow. Breathe deeply. Forget my past. Swallow fear. Wait. Wait. Now I remember. Invented again by the wizardry of the tongue. A naked man laid down in harmony. You know damn well the only formula that matters, proven mouth on mouth, only passed down when satisfaction received, satisfaction given. You have undressed, laid me to rest. Lit this place with silence and breath. Emptied me in the space before you. I memorized me whole, but flickering glance. Hooked me again an inch of my life. Licked your lips and helped Joseph. <laughs> Yeah. Needless to say, we were conscious for three days. That's about the farthest thought from the. <laughs> Hi, Darren. Hi, Darren. There are so many people here. It's the Paris. Wait a minute, bro. Hold on. <laughs> See, that's when you know I'm better. <laughs> but when a bro tried to jump in on the radio, he's like, hold on, man. You're a good kid right now. You know, man. That's an excellent segue to the world stage. <laughs> you know, when I came to Los Angeles in 1991, I began, I knew as Pearl Sharp. A brilliant, brilliant cultural worker, marvelous, everything from actor to activist. Pearl does more, even now, in the 21st century, on selectric typewriter. Right. <laughs> Most people do with, what is that thing called? Chat TP? <laughs> they all say that shit is AI. <laughs> That's, Real organic intelligence. Mm -hmm. And the world stage had started in 1989. I was looking for a literary home. Um, and I knew come out because Earl had done a marvelous documentary on him called Life as a Saxophone. And I met come out. Also, of, of my some formative poets, I met Cecilia Wallach, who at the time was directing the Southern California office of the poets, California poets in the schools, which is still in business, you know, all of the 
um, well, Cecilia and I became really good friends and we're very friends to this day. And Gloria Alvarez, who I think is here, very well. And we have been um, both sort of poetic teammates since that time. We've read together, we've edited each other's work, um, we've debated. I, I wish I had learned Spanish by now, Gloria, but I have. Um, with Gloria's guidance, I have been ushered into how that came to me. So I say all that to say the world stage, though, is the place for me. I haven't been going to the stage in many years. Mm, you know, you grow a whole new generation. But I helped raise a generation. And the reason I could cut my brother off with love is I'm old now. <laughs> in the old days, brother, I believe it. So, I want you to know I'm happy to talk with you briefly afterwards, but I just wanted to make sure we close the circle with this experience. Mm -hmm. um, the world stage on Damien Boulevard in the work part. If you are a poet in Los Angeles of whatever cultural background, although our essential doorway is African. If you haven't gone to the world stage, because mm, I'm in a generous spirit, I would just encourage you <laughs> to do that. Wednesday, 7.30 p.m., um, $5 donation. Nobody needs to turn it away. The workshop, 7.30 to 8.30 p.m., some of the finest critique you will ever receive on your work. When I'm in the mood, I'll take a new poem over you know, all these years, and I will get on stage and I'll read it, and I will take notes as people feed give me responses. Normally, I'm sort of in the audience as an OG, mm -hmm. sensing my angles and encouraging, particularly younger writers, never to settle for signature poems, never to settle for poems that just reflect your ego, never to settle for using your poems to get sex, or to otherwise be lightweight pimp. <laughs> and during the 90s in particular, We began a literally transcendent ride. Shonda was there. AK was there. She's supported me for miles to come regularly. Glory would roll through. I mean, it was intercultural, intersectional. It was at the world stage for a dude, uh, we now would say they. Where a person stood up and says, Hey, I feel so safe here. And I want you to know that I, at the time, have been using your track this time. Now, it's a small place. We had cold, cold village politics. So there were arguments, there were debates, all of that. But somehow, somehow this little storefront with a halo. Oh, it's on. still on Degna, and it's still percolating. There are people here because they closed down the workshop tonight and invited people to come here. Oh. I know they did it for me. But because I'm the co poet, we also did it for our. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Have you ever been to the world stage? 
and then, so she knows the rules of the man. So for this final poem, which is a tad longer, I'd like to dip into this book. It's called Bless the Ashes. That poem is dedicated to my mother. This poem, which I'll excerpt, is called Grooved Pavement Ahead. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. So I want to say thank you, World Stage. Um, thank you, Kamal Dawi. Thank you, Billy Higgins. Thank you, all the men and women who have volunteered there. I volunteered there. I have done everything at the World Stage, from change toilet paper to sit on the board, to produce a weekend concert series, to being a donor. And I can tell you, though I've had my own village beats occasionally, I never wasted one dollar, one second, one tear during my time at the world stage. And it will always be my literary prior and from anyone, any young person can say that I have contributed to their work. I'm super humble. If anybody says anything destructive about me or kind, even about my unkindness, <laughs> it's slicing up that wood. I sliced it. Because I was raised by Tony K. Bambar. Oh. I was raised by Hakeem Adabuti. Yeah. Yeah. I was raised by Melvin E. Brown in Baltimore. You've never heard of him, but I have. <laughs> I was raised by S. Pearl. We have been in the artistic trenches, loving our community, loving the work loving each other, and we will edit each other until we get it right. <laughs> until we get it right. And Lynn Thompson is here. I'll go in Port Lauderdale, Los Angeles City. I want to thank Lynn. Lynn. Along with Brian and Sonia Wallace. I'll go in Port Lauderdale. Of West Hollywood. And one wrote two profound letters of support for Carla and I and our proposal for Ode to the Land. And we were not surprised that we were chosen, except in that humble way. I didn't know he was calling me because I'm 50 right now. <laughs> Which whispered. One and I actually I do want to say that if you don't mind, um, when Carl and I started, part of our discussion, we knew we didn't want to volunteer. Carl is a labor activist, for God's sake. <laughs> but we talked it through, and we said, "Well, this is going to be the hardest volunteer gig we've ever had." Um, but we said we will work hard to raise funds. And we said, if we raise any money that's above and beyond, we will split it 50 50. And that's what we did. And so I want you to know that we're sitting here after months of grown folks' work. And in the Black community, there's nothing more sacred in my tradition than grown folks' work. And so, Carla, once again, I want to say, Thank you for um, your adaptation of our proposal because it is elegant. And she is the one who was able to find a DNA trail to the Zorthian farm, which is an iconic uh, 
a place in Alpha D, as you will see if you're able to go in a um, last time I was there, I saw Dwight Schrute saying we kill. I would like to start this poem by telling you something. This is a true statement that I understand. <clears throat> I have lived long enough to write about my death and my awakening. Born of sperm, charmed as a look of love. Born of ovum, perfumed as a look of love. Grown out the womb, drum major of joy. Working class avatar, DJ channeling the disappeared. Mystic diagramming is enzyme of the maestro, splendor, all favorite teams. I am the apocalypse. Public servant with touch of right abacom open to transfusion from all knowledge, humbled knowing man is older than humans. What's 100,000 years? Who are your people? Yeah. Who give you permission? He could front as savior, Recruit apostles to shade him with umbrellas. Translate pronouncements on his species stories. He could be tempted to remind us all, reverb of repression, painting his plasma. I have never banned a people's language, snatched children, from their culture's prior briar patch. I have never slandered a maroon, posse pounded after a family running into independence, sewn passbooks into the seams of innocent citizens, fractured justice in black codes, fugitive slave laws, Patriot acts. He resists tendency to swap curses. If we swap with gifts, well then, let's get scarlet up in here. <laughs> Fine tune our surveillance. What's that sign? Groove paper. I hate it. Are your people raw originality, sight and reach, rhythm and seed, hope and ritual, cord of human muscle, Code for world peace can be sampled from the banter between, between James Brown and Bobby Burr. Yeah. A block party can morph into a press conference. Giggling children take questions. Belt tightening, teenagers flash signs that smelt grates on our doors into collective. Tilt their gaze to unscrew bolts on bars, commanding our windows closed. Who have you shown to be when there's groove hidden ahead? Three days, 
a go-go of passion, <laughs> cell division, carnival, implode into the tumbao of his ecstatic life. On day one, gleaming black hands cupped sunrise, trembled through parting hours, hovered, descended, drawn to combustion between man and woman. Electrified by downstroke from all directions, gliding magic, perfuming their look of love, igniting their seamlessness. Black hands cupping lovers, feeding the gravity of dancers, orbiting invisible me. On the second day, nine blindfolded monarch butterflies fluttered against midnight, wing to wing in a sliver of sight through closed eyes. They dropped, they draped the coon between mother and father, enfolded by sleep, stitched by the velvet of satisfaction. Butterflies alighted lovers head to toe, wings droning to the choir's amen to life, a kneeling from the forge of relentless recombination. Three days deep, a riot of becoming in the vows of loved ones. Circles fused, hands raised, guarantees to humbly protect the stirring. Who will glide us through chaos and into groove pain? We get it, mission. We show you who you need to be. We inside the womb, nourishing suspension, clave of sperm and ovum, microscopic contusions, elemental sequences, relentless radiation, human all at once, by time, by chemistry, by sensation, skin and bone, nerves, hormone, skin, weight of muscle, full of reflex, serenade of brain wave, celebration and echo, speech and incense, song and invitation, song and invitation, song to stretch through saline of creation, somersault into human, the system sealed by infinite, infinite, infinite calibration. Thank you so much. Okay. Oh, yeah, there's a couple of times. Who wants to plan? Okay, well, I did say I need to feel respectful and you know me. So, if you want to ask this question, otherwise, we are finished. So, third, if you want to answer a question, you can ask me publicly. I will not be talking one on one. Right. 
Or is it so anyway, is it, so you, are you going to ask your question, yeah. sir? Yes, Ode to the Land. Whose idea was that? The what? Ode to the Land. Whose idea, idea, idea was that? The title of my proposal was out. When I applied for the residents, I'm oh, sorry, the yard, they asked us to suggest the program. And I suggested something called Old to the Land. That I personally wanted to give meetings at places in iconic, uh, iconic places of the house. Uh, when we decided to change our format. Brilliant. Yeah, and to bring together this dream that I had of having 55 having seniors and yes. yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, so is that it? Okay, we hope.